Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. Um, today we are going to continue. I created a really fun exercise for us to continue understanding how to create space in art. Um, if you've watched some of the last two videos I've posted, I've done some um, drawings that help us feel like we're moving through space, as in help us feel like there's something close to us and far from us. And today, um, this is especially for younger kids, younger kids friendly. Um, I'm gonna start putting out a range of lessons between the four classes, some that are more challenging and some that are more young, young early childhood friendly. This is a very early childhood friendly lesson. We're going to be drawing three cars, one big at the bottom, middle, second biggest, and last biggest at the top of our page. And I'm gonna explain why first, okay? The why and how this works. So it's almost like a magic trick in art. Um, and I explained this in the other videos. So sorry if you're getting repeated repetition, but you know what? It's gonna help your learning. So middle ground, foreground, and background. It's like a magic trick in art to help you be able to draw things looking like they are closer or farther, farther in space. For example, if I were to just draw three houses randomly on my page, they would just be floating on the paper like, like whatever. But if I use foreground, middle ground, and background, and I draw one big house in the foreground, one big house on the bottom of my page, one big ha one middle middle sized house in the middle of my page and one small house at the top of my page for my background suddenly doesn't it look like this house is closer and this one's a little farther and this one's a little farther so that is how we create a sense of distance in on drawing and um important to know we have this line here that we always draw that is called the horizon line and it's the line where the land or the earth would meet the sky right so think about it as a picture. If you were to see this in a photograph, it kind of makes sense. So we're going to run with that idea using foreground, big objects in the bottom of our page, middle ground, medium-sized objects in the middle of our page, and background, small objects on the top of our page, just like this circles, right? We're going to be using that same idea to draw out a little cityscape. Big car on the bottom, middle car in the middle, smaller car on the top, in the back on the back, right? Doesn't this look like it would take you maybe 10 seconds to walk to this car, 30 seconds to walk to this car, and even up to like a minute to walk here? So we're gonna practice foreground, say it, foreground, middle ground, background, and we're gonna draw our horizon line and fill it up with, the, with some little houses for the city, okay? And I have pre-sketched my drawing in pencil here, and I'm gonna go over it with marker so that you can see. And I definitely highly recommend that you use pencil for your drawing first because if you make a mistake, you can always erase it and you don't have to start over. And after that, you can do what I did where you go over with marker. Or you can just go straight in with colored pencil or crayon, however you want to do it, okay? So, I have my music playing um, and I'm going to talk us through this. And this is going to be fun because after that, you know how I love customizing, we can customize our cars color them however we want. So I'm gonna start with my biggest car on the bottom of my page in the foreground of my page. And my cars are gonna look like those like little Volkswagen buggies because those are my favorite. I, I really like the way those cars look. They're so cute. And so to get the basic car shape of a buggy, I just wanna note, if you wanna draw your cars like rectangles, if you wanna draw them simple like just an oval, you can do that, okay? Draw your car however you want, however you feel most comfortable. Today, our real practice is trying to just get them in different sizes so it looks like they're they're spread out, right? It looks like one, they're far away and close up. But for my buggy, it's base, I'm going to start with a line that goes like this. That's almost like I'm drawing like a rainbow or the top of someone's head, okay? And this is going to be fun. Watch this trick, okay? Out of, out of my rainbow, I'm going to draw a loop a curve line, a curve line, not too long. And this almost looks like a, a person's like bald head with their ears, doesn't it? So that's gonna be the sh general shape of my car. And watch this, I'm gonna do a little line come here, little line here. I'm gonna draw a circle for my wheel. And I'm gonna draw a line connecting this circle. 
And then for my windows, I'm gonna do a, two straight lines and I'm gonna curve a line out of my straight line and do another line out in to connect it. Curve a line out so that it imitates the rainbow and connect it. And then a little line for my door. Maybe I'll put a little handle in there too. Okay, um, I can even add some lines for my engine. Great, so I've got my big car on the front, my car that looks like it's closest to me. If I were to walk out of my house, it'd be right in front of me. I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna do the middle car. I'm gonna do the smaller car so that I know how to do the middle car. Okay, so we're gonna travel on our paper. We're gonna go up to the corner. We're not gonna draw right in the corner, teensy weensy, but we are gonna draw more up on the right corner. And we're gonna do this exact same process. We're gonna do our rainbow, a rainbow curve a curve coming out so it looks like a head with two ears. Bring a line in and in. Two circles and draw a line to connect it. And I'm gonna do my window the same way. A straight line, a curve line like the rainbow, and a straight line. Straight line, curve line like the rainbow, straight line, and a door. And maybe my little handles. So I've got my car all the way in the back, my car way up front, and now I'm gonna just do my car in the middle ground, which it's almost, I like to make an analogy, like you know that story about Goldilocks and the porridge? One, one car is really big, like one porridge is really hot, one porridge is really cold, one car is big, one car is small, and the warm porridge, right in the middle, okay? So just a car that's right in the middle of these two sizes, bigger than this, but smaller than that. I'm gonna do the same rainbow. I'm gonna do two ears coming out like a guy's top of the head. <gasps> okay, I'm gonna do a straight line, a circle, and connect. And then, same thing, straight line, curve to imitate, straight line, curve to imitate with a door. So here we have it so far. We have three cars that look like they're moving in space, that they're farther away from each other. We're gonna add the horizon line. Say the word horizon line. If you ever go out to the beach, you know, a family member or an adult might say, wow, look at the horizon. So that's like, look at, look at how the sun looks as it sets down into the water. So where the sun meets the water, where the air meets the earth, where the sky meets the ground or the ocean, right? So the, the uh, horizon line, we're gonna always put in the back behind our third, our farthest object. So here's my horizon line behind my farthest house. Here's my horizon line behind my farthest circle. So we're gonna add our horizon line behind the farthest car. And horizon lines don't have to be straight. Like if you think about a hill, if you think about right now in your mind a picture of a hill, the hill, the hill's curved shape is the horizon line because that's the earth meeting the sky. But for our purposes, since we're doing like a city and streets tend to be flat, my horizon line is going to be like kind of wavy, but pretty flat. And then up here, it's super simple. We're just going to do some lines. I'm going to add some trees. We're going to just do a bunch of lines leading up with a bunch of squares in them. And that's how we make, um, draw a little simplified idea of like a city. And I'm gonna make my houses funny. I'm gonna make like some short, throw in a window. I drew a tree in here and a simplified tree. It's almost like I'm drawing broccoli. Like a little cloud with a thing sticking out, with the trunk sticking out. So this is as if the tree is in front of my building, right? Here I'm gonna draw a tree also. I've got another building. I've got my house, another house I wanted to draw in. I'm gonna, I did, decided like, you know what, I really want nature in here, so I did a clump of three trees. And notice when I stop, like, it really looks like cauliflower or broccoli to me, it's funny. Um, I don't like let the line go over, so it looks like the trees are overlapping. It looks like they're one on top of each other, right? Like if you were to draw this tape on top of this, 
you wouldn't draw this line on top of the tape. It's covering it. Okay, so that's the same idea here. It's covering the tree behind it. Same here, the, the house isn't gonna go down into the car. I'm gonna stop the line right at the car because it's like the car is covering the house. Get it? Or school or whatever building you might want this to be. And same here. Not gonna drag the line into my car because the car is covering it. Awesome, so I have my black and white sketch down. Um, and now it's like I like always like I've drawn a coloring book for myself I'm gonna erase my pencil marks. You can see some of the pencil marks right here lingering around I want to get rid of that before I start coloring and making my artwork um, final Yeah, so this is like a really good trick friends is use your pencil to sketch out Use a thin black marker after to outline everything um, so it looks neat and then color it in. It's like you don't even need to go out and buy coloring books, you can make your own. Or you can ha use your coloring books to help inspire you to make your own. Alright, so I've done most of my erasing, it looks great. Um, and now we get to have the fun times of if usually you go outside, most cars are just one color. Well, you know what? We're artists. Um, my buildings don't have to be made of brick. They can be made of multicolored, um, you know, whatever the type material it might be. And my cars can be three or four colors with crazy patterns. I would love it if I walked out on the street and cars and buildings looked like this. So I'm going to use markers. I'm going to use three colors per car. I like to give limitations because if we go all crazy, we'll get confused, we might get tired even. Um, so I'm gonna limit it to three colors per car. I'm gonna go with the same colors I used last time. So for this one, I drew just organic shapes filling in parts of the car. It's like I'm drawing like a camouflage pattern or like clouds or like cow print <laughs> in my own color choices. And notice I'm leaving the windows. I'm not coloring in the windows. I'm not coloring in the wheels because Part, those parts are made up of a different material, so I'm going to save them to color them in differently. So whatever white parts I have now, I'm going to fill in with my second color, drawing some more shapes to fill in the white spaces. And of course, I hope you're definitely doing your own thing. You could be drawing different patterns. You could be doing, if you don't want to use three colors and you want to do rainbow, go for it. Uh, you could be drawing hearts, flowers, dots, lightning bolts, whatever you want at home as you follow along. Um, I'm doing my thing, you do your thing, right? Because we're our own people, so our artists can be unique. If you want to be inspired and follow this along, tons of artists pull inspiration from other artists. Um, that's how art evolves, is actually an artist will look at something and be like, wow, I like what this person did. I'm going to do something like that, but I'm going to put my own spin on it. So it's not copying, but it's being inspired. Um, so you can do either or. Go along with what I'm doing or do your own thing. But the goal is to try our best and fill up our white spaces as much as we can um, within our objects, the key objects, to make the work look and we're practicing a lot here like I'm, I'm learning how to be more precise I'm learning how to be patient 
I'm learning how to feel peaceful. So I like this. Um, in my first drawing, I drew a little person in the window and I added like some magical patterns in there, pretending like the windows would be like have something going on. So I might do the same thing here with my blue. Just add some cool patterns. Just make it fun, you know, just have fun with it. I might want to re-outline this just for fun. And then my person, um, let's see, this marker might be thick, but I might just draw a little head and a smiley face, and it's like they're holding a wheel. It's hot. I'm so sorry that this marker is too thick, so this drawing, you know, my person looks a little silly, but I put a little ponytail on her. So, you know, no big deal. It's all about having fun. I'm going to color in my wheels, finally. I'm going to use crayon, and I kind of colored in my wheels a different color before by accident, but I kind of like the way it looks. So I'll do one of my wheels black, and I'll do the inside of the circle a different color, just for fun. And here's a neat trick, friends. I know I want my wheels to be the same on every car. So while I have my black out, I'm going to just go ahead and color in all the wheels. So I don't have to go through the hard work of getting out my black again. It's just like a little way to save time. I know I want all my cars to look different. If you want all your cars to look the same, you could just go do orange, orange, orange. Um, but I know I want my cars to look different, but I want my wheels to be the same. So... I'm going to just do the same thing I did over, so I don't have to worry about taking these out again. Cool, so I've done my, um, I've done my big car in the foreground. We love to practice our vocabulary. I've, I'm finished decorating my car in the foreground. Now it's time to move on to my car in the middle ground. And I'm going to do a different pattern, so I'm going to... I'm going to play around with lines, make it look a little wacky. How fun would it be if you could ride in one of these cars or if you could see these cars riding around the city? And notice, I'm stopping my line when I hit the window, yeah? Because I want the window to be separate. It's a separate thing from my car pattern. So this is very wacky looking, I love it. And I'm gonna get another color. I told myself three colors, right? I'm gonna do, this is a trick, friends, and I've talked about it before. If you use a light color, you can always put dark on top. So I'm gonna do the rest in yellow, and then I'm gonna put dots on top of the yellow. And so the reason why I picked yellow is because it's the lightest color, which means I can pretty much put any color I want on top. If you were to color something in, in black or even dark purple or dark blue, do you think you could put yellow on top and it would show up? It wouldn't because it's too light and it can't, it can't show up on the dark, okay? Now watch this. I can pick any color I want. I'm going to pick a darker green. If I try to put dark green on black, it doesn't really show up. I just You can kind of see it, but not really. You can't see that it's dark green, right? But if I put it on my yellow... gonna put it kind of all over my yellow spaces if I put it on my yellow it really shows up okay and I'm gonna go ahead and do some fun patterns in here different not not the same because I want my window to be different from my from my car and I might add in my little person I cannot do it with the marker it's impossible so I'll do it with like a little crayon as if they're driving, okay? Okay, we're down to our last car. So exciting. I'm gonna go for a different pattern. I'm gonna start with a light green, and I was doing like a fun flower print. Or like it's as if it's like leaves. or leaves or dots or ovals, some kind of fun print. And yet again, I'm gonna fill it in with color. I'm 
gonna do something different. My pink is also pretty light. So if I put this in between the white spaces and I wanna add something on top, it'll still show up. So let's say I wanna take dark blue now, okay? And I wanna add some dots on top or dashes. Shows up, right? Sweet, so I have my three cars, one way in the front in the foreground, um, one in the middle ground, and one in the background. Good, all set. And so my next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start coloring in my city. And the first thing I'm gonna start with are my trees. And just like that trick before, I know I want them all to be the same green. So I'm gonna just keep that green out and color them in. And I, I, um, I'm gonna also talk about the idea of how much you wanna really put details in your picture. So if you wanna decorate your houses with all these crazy patterns, you can as well. But sometimes we wanna think as an artist, where do we want the viewer's eye to go? So think about it, I think about it as like a zoo. If you're looking at a zoo, in a cage in a zoo, and it's all leopards and all these different animals, crazy exotic animals with crazy patterns, your eye's not gonna know where to go, which is fine in some cases. But imagine if there was just one tiger or two tigers and then everything else was like white birds. Where would your eye go, right? It would either go straight to the tigers or straight to the birds. So we can create that, we can influence where our viewer's eye goes based on how we make our art. So if I make this all crazy patterns, my eye, my eye, if I'm looking at it, my eye will be like, whoa, 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 whoa. But because I'm going to actually just make these just solid colors, my eye first is like car, car, car. Oh, houses. Okay, and I want that, I'm gonna do that. Now, of course, you are the artist. If you want your viewer's eye to kind of be like, houses, car, houses, car, and kind of go all over, go for it. Um, but it's just a little trick I wanted to talk about. All right, same thing. I know I'm gonna just use three colors for my houses, so if I'm gonna do yellow, and instead of putting my crayon down after to do the other colors, I'm just gonna color in all the houses I wanna do yellow and yellow. And I'm gonna do a pattern. So I'm gonna do like yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue, red, yellow. And that's it. That's how I keep things simple. I'm gonna do blue and yellow, blue, red. If you've ever done slime with me, yellow, blue, red are primary colors. They are the colors that we can make all other colors out of. They're the colors you have to buy at the store. But once you get them, you can make all the other colors. Yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue. And we are practicing our patterns right now, by the way. Yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue. Okay, last color, yellow, blue, red. Now I know all my leftover houses are gonna be red. Yellow, uh, over here. Awesome. So my last step is coloring in my little doors and windows. If you want to, you can do that. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Um, you can keep them white. I'm just gonna put a little color. I'm kind of just picking. I'm deciding, because I want it to be not so crazy, I'm deciding I'm gonna make all the doors and windows basically like red or pink. 
And my very last step, friends, is that we're going to color in the sky behind these trees. So notice, okay, my white space for the road, fine. If you want to color in the road, if you want to draw in the lines for the road, like I did here, you know, um, and explore that, you can. I'm not going to for um, time purposes and because the focus is really, again, practicing foreground, middle, and background. But we do want to show there's sky here because remember, horizon line horizon line is where the earth meets the sky so we want to make sure we throw in our sky to show our understanding that the horizon line does meet the sky even if the sky is covered by houses or apartment buildings which if you look go up go, up, go and look at new york you know we've got tons of skyscrapers but the still wherever there isn't a skyscraper all the space in between is the sky and in my picture, the sky is going to be light blue because it's daytime. Okay, so this is my drawing. I'm good. I'm so happy about this. Um, worked so hard. Was able to practice these terms and show um, a sense of space. And of course, the last thing I'm going to do always is sign my artwork. So you can sign it with your first letter of your first name. Mine is B. And that's about it. I hope you had so much fun and can't wait to see what you create. Thank you.